ลำดับต่อไปนะคะจะขอเชิญทุกท่านรับชมวิธีทัศน์เปิดการประชุมวิชาการสถาบันพระปกเกล้าครั้งที่21ประจำปี2562ขอเรียนเชิญรับชมพร้อมกันค่ะครับจะเข้าถึงเงินทุนสถาบันการเงินธนาคารแล้วก็ต้องพูดนอกระบบซึ่งดอกเบี้ยเป็นแพงมากผมทํางานอาชีพตรงนี้มาผมก็ทงกดขี่กดเหงเขาคือเป็นระดับตรงนั้นแต่เราก็ระดับใกล้ๆเคียงกันแต่เขาขุดลงก็เราเป็นลูกจ้างเขาผมอยากให้นายจ้างรู้ตรงนั้นว่าความลำบากของคนทํางานมันยากขนาดไหนมันระบาดขนาดไหนมันมีบางอย่างที่คนอื่นได้ทําได้แต่เราทําไม่ได้เอายกตัวอย่างอย่างครับเบียร์อย่างเงี้ยเราโดนกฎหมายกําหนดให้กับผู้เล่นเดิมๆได้เล่นซ้ําๆแต่เด็กรุ่นใหม่อย่างเราเราเนี่ยไม่สามารถลงไปทําได้นะคนเขาชอบมองว่าเหมือนกับเพศที่สามอ่ะไม่ใช่คนการเมืองที่ทุกคนมีส่วนร่วมการบังคับใช้กฎหมายอย่างเท่าเทียมเทคโนโลยีและอำนาจที่กระจายสู่ท้องถิ่นในทุกมิติสังคมวัฒนธรรมแห่งโอกาสที่เป็นของคนทุกคนความฝันหรือความจริงคงเป็นคำถามในใจใครหลายคนหลังประชาธิปไตยในไทยผ่านร้อนผ่านหนาวมาเป็นเวลา88ปีสิบสี่มิถุนายนพุทธศักราช2475เวลาย่ำรุ่งพลเอกพระยาพระหนพลพยุหะเสนาอันคำประกาศคณะราชฉบับที่หนึ่งรุ่งอรุณของระบบใหม่ถือกำเนิดขึ้น10ธันวาคมพุทธศักราช2475พระบาทสมเด็จพระปกเกล้าเจ้าอยู่หัวส่งพระราชทานรัฐธรรมนูญฉบับถาวรฉบับแรกแปดสิปดปีพันผ่านประชาธิปไตยที่เคยเป็นความหวังกลับยังไม่สามารถทําให้ประเทศหายป่วยไข้หนำซ้ํายังมีอาการเรื้อรังหนึ่งในปัญหาใหญ่คือความเหลื่อมล้ําที่ดูเหมือนเชื้อกําลังกําเริบเข้าขั้นรุนแรงกลุ่มคนที่รวยที่สุดกับกลุ่มคนที่จนที่สุดมีไรายได้ห่างกัน11ถึง13เท่าตัวจํานวนสินทรัพย์ห่างกัน70เท่าตัวประชากรเพียงร้อยละหนึ่งของประเทศเท่านั้นที่ครอบครองทรัพย์สินมากถึงร้อยละ 66.9 จากทรัพย์สินโดยรวมของคนทั้งประเทศขณะที่กลุ่มคนที่จนที่สุดร้อยละสิของประเทศกลับไม่มีทรัพย์สินติดตัวไม่เว้นแม้กระทั่งที่ดินอยู่อาศัยความแตกต่างกระจายออกไปอย่างรู้สึกได้ชัดเจนและชัดขึ้นกรุงเทพเป็นศูนย์กลางการกระจุกตัวของความเจริญอำนาจในการเข้าถึงทรัพยากรที่ไม่เท่ากันความยุติธรรมที่ถูกตั้งคำถามกลุ่มชาติพันธุ์หรือกระทั่งเพศทางเลือกยังคงถูกเลือกปฏิบัติการยึดมั่นในหลักนิติธรรมการมีส่วนร่วมทางการเมืองการเลือกตั้งอย่างเสรีเป็นธรรมและรับผิดชอบต่อเสียงประชาชนเหล่านี้ล้วนเป็นเครื่องชี้วัดการมีประชาธิปไตยที่มีคุณภาพไม่ว่าในเชิงทฤษฎีหรือในเชิงประจักษ์และจากประสบการณ์ที่ผ่านพบมาในหลายประเทศล้วนบอกเป็นเสียงเดียวกันว่าการพัฒนาประชาธิปไตยให้มีคุณภาพเท่านั้นคือหนทางที่จะลดช่องว่างความเหลื่อมล้ำในสังคมได้แต่อะไรที่ทำให้การเดินทางอย่างยาวนานของประชาธิปไตยไทยกลับไม่สามารถสร้างคุณภาพได้ผลสะท้อนคือเรากำลังกลายเป็นประเทศที่มีความเหลื่อมล้ำสูงซึ่งหมายถึงปัญหาอีกมากที่จะตามมานับจากนี้นี่จึงเป็นเหตุผลที่พวกเราต้องมาหาคำตอบร่วมกันที่นี่การประชุมวิชาการสถาบันพระปกเกล้าครั้งที่21ประจำปี2562ลดช่องว่างความเหลื่อมล้ำสร้างคุณภาพประชาธิปไตยและหัวข้อเหล่านี้ก็คือความท้าทายที่เราจะต้องสร้างขึ้นเพราะกฎหมายเครื่องมือแห่งความเป็นธรรม
ทุกคนต้องมีส่วนร่วมได้ไม่ว่าที่มาการบังคับใช้หรือกระทั่งการเข้าถึงกระบวนการยุติธรรมที่เท่าเทียมกันเพราะการเมืองคือพื้นที่แห่งการจัดสรรต่อรองทางนโยบายและอำนาจในการจัดสรรทรัพยากรทำอย่างไรจึงจะเปิดโอกาสให้ทุกภาคส่วนเข้ามามีส่วนร่วมเชื่อมั่นและมีเสถียรภาพที่ทุกคนยอมรับได้เพราะปากท้องคือปัญหาใหญ่แต่ความเหลื่อมล้ำทางเศรษฐกิจคืออุปสรรคสำคัญอย่างยิ่งถึงเวลาแล้วที่ความไม่เป็นธรรมทั้งหลายจะต้องถูกจัดการและกระจายออกไปอย่างเป็นระบบเพราะทุกคนคือคนเท่ากันความแตกต่างไม่ว่าด้วยชาติพันธุ์ศาสนาเพศหรือเพศสภาพจะต้องไม่ถูกเลือกปฏิบัติและได้รับการปฏิบัติอย่างเคารพในสิทธิศักดิ์ศรีและได้รับการคุ้มครองทางสังคมมีสวัสดิการอย่างเสมอหน้าเท่าเทียมกันเพราะประชาชนทุกพื้นที่คือศักยภาพของประเทศอำนาจจะต้องไม่ถูกรวมศูนย์ไว้ส่วนกลางจนกลายเป็นอุปสรรคของโอกาสศักดิ์ศรีและการพัฒนาอีกต่อไปเพราะความเหลื่อมล้ำที่สูงขึ้นหมายถึงความขัดแย้งที่สะสมและรอเวลาปะทุนานวันความขัดแย้งอาจเปลี่ยนเป็นความรุนแรงเมื่อถึงเวลานั้นก็อาจจะสายไปที่จะย้อนกลับมาคุยกันอีกครั้งพุทธศักราช2562ประเทศไทยมีรัฐบาลจากการเลือกตั้งอีกครั้งในรอบ5ปีผู้คนต่างเฝ้ามองและจับตาช่วงเวลาอันมีความหมายนับจากนี้ประชาธิปไตยที่มีคุณภาพคือเป้าหมายที่ต้องเดินไปให้ถึงภายใต้จดใหญ่ประกอบด้วยความเป็นธรรมที่ต้องยึดหลักนิติธรรมการมีส่วนร่วมทางการเมืองการเลือกตั้งอย่างเสรีและเป็นธรรมความรับผิดชอบทางการเมืองต่อเสียงประชาชนเสรีภาพในการแสดงออกทางการเมืองความเท่าเทียมโดยไม่เลือกปฏิบัติการตอบสนองความต้องการและความจำเป็นพื้นฐานชีวิตของประชาชนหากนับจากนี้ยังไม่สามารถลงหลักปักฐานประชาธิปไตยที่มีคุณภาพในสังคมไทยได้สิทธิโอกาสอำนาจศักดิ์ศรีและความยุติธรรมก็คงไม่อาจเกิดขึ้นสำหรับอนาคตในแบบนั้นสวรรค์อาจเป็นของคนแค่หยิบมือแต่ที่รออยู่เบื้องหน้าของคนส่วนใหญ่มันคืออนาคตแบบไหนกันแน่และนี่คือคำถามที่พวกเราในฐานะคนไทยทุกคนต้องช่วยกันหาคำตอบและสร้างหนทางก้าวเดินของประชาธิปไตยที่เฉลี่ยทุกเฉลี่ยสุขในการอยู่ร่วมกันครับทุกท่านก็คงจะได้ประมวลเหตุการณ์ต่างๆนะครับและทําความเข้าใจเกี่ยวกับประชาธิปไตยและก็ความเหลื่อมล้ําว่ามีความสัมพันธ์กันอย่างไรผ่านการชมวิทิทัศน์เมื่อสักครู่ได้พอสมควรนะครับต่อไปจะเป็นการการแสดงปาฐกถานําในหัวข้อเรื่อง bridging the inequality gap and nurturing quality of democracy โดยมิสเตอร์เรโนเมเจร์ผู้แทนโครงการพัฒนาแห่งสหประชาชาติประจำประเทศไทยหรือ UNDP ครับซึ่งในการรับฟังปาฐกถานําในครั้งนี้ครับท่านจะสามารถดาวน์โหลดเอกสารได้จาก QR code ที่อยู่บริเวณ Flash Card หรือบริเวณที่จะขึ้นอยู่ที่ทหน้าจอในเวลานี้นะครับค่ะในโอกาสนี้ขอกราบเรียนเชิญดรชิงชัยหานเจนลักษ์ประธานคณะกรรมการจัดงานประชุมวิชาการสถาปนพบกเกล้าครั้งที่21ให้เกียรติแนะนำประวัติผู้แสดงปาฐกถานำขอเรียนเชิญค่ะคุณว่าครับคุณเอ็กเซนซิสดิสติงเฟดเกย์ลีดี้แอนด์เจนเซมิสต์ดิสิตี้เทเวนตี้เฟิร์สไทม์นาวแอมแชร์ในประเทศนี้ขอบคุณ And we are going always, uh, you know, uh, advance in advance. We're moving along quite well uh, on the democratization process. Perhaps it's not fast enough, but we have to pay attention more on the journey rather than the destination at this stage. So we come. The, our uh, the Thai society has come to another 
turning point. We have reached so many turning points, but I think this one is the most important. We are going to, we are now in, in what we call full fresh uh, democratic government. Now we have to look at the, how to maintain this uh, democratic government to be sustainable and how we can nurture our system to be uh, fit for the whole society and not for any group of people. The important factor to do that is to tackle the inequality. And uh, I think that uh, the nurturing quality of democracy it cannot be just a statement all by itself. But you have to link back to the principal cause of our failure of the democratization in the past. And that is we have a very substantive gap of inequality. So we are trying to, you have to try to bridging the inequality gap before you can get to this uh, quality of democratization or the democratic government. This morning, we are fortunate that we are going to listen to our keynote speaker, who has worked so many on these questions of inequality. Inequality certainly has um, many aspects. He has worked for the past almost 20 years with UNDP and really familiar with what is the most important development theory going on at, right now is the UN uh, 17 goals for the sustainable development. And the goal number 10, is very much relevant to the theme of our Congress this year. It's talking about how to mitigate inequality gap, and not just only economic gaps, but all kinds of uh, gap, sexual, cultural, religions. But I won't go on much longer Perhaps we can learn more from our keynote speaker, Mr. René Meyer s'il vous plaît. I give you Mr. René Meyer, UNDP Director of Thailand. Thank you very much for those kind words, Mr. Hanshala. Her Royal Highness, uh, Princess Pachara Kitiapa, Mr. Chuan Lipai, President of the National Assembly and Executive Committee Chairman of the King Prachatipok Institute, Professor Wu Ti Sa, Tan Shai, Secretary General of the Institute, and we've just heard Mr. Ching Chai Han Shan La, Chair, for the 21st of the, tw for the 21th time of the uh, annual KPI Congress Committee. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, before I start my formal speech, I thought I would uh, share with you my uh, high appreciation for the video that uh, KPI has put together um, and link it to what I consider as bravery on the part of the Institute and maybe also on the president of its organizing committee who's done this 21 years, one after the other, and for trusting someone who's only been in the country six months to give you a keynote 
address. But six months are long enough to see the honesty and the seriousness with which this video has been produced, balancing, I think, extremely well the issues that we are about to discuss during this three-day event. It is a great honor and privilege for the United Nations Development Program to have been invited by the Institute to deliver this address on inequality and democracy. And I'd like to thank the Institute and the committee organizing this 21st Congress for giving me this unique opportunity to be here and humbly share with you a few reflections based on the work and perspective of a UN organization dedicated to development on the issue of bridging the inequality gap and nurturing the quality of democracy. When the invitation from KPI to deliver this address reached us a few months ago, and looking at the issue that was proposed, I immediately replied positively, and this for two reasons. First, because reduction of inequalities and promotion of democracy are very much at the core of the work of the UNDP in Thailand and globally. Everywhere in the more than 130 countries where we work, and here in Thailand for more than 50 years, together with our partners from government, civil society, private sector, and local communities, we mobilize resources and expertise to first understand why inequalities are increasing and why democracies are being challenged in so many places around the world. And second, to identify development solutions and interventions that are context-specific to address these inequalities and to strengthen democracy. The second reason to say yes to this invitation is the fact that since I've arrived in Thailand about six months ago to take this new appointment as resident representative of UNDP, I have to say the issues of inequalities and democracy have been on my agenda every day, one way or another. I recall how in early December of last year, as I was coming through Bangkok for, at the time, still a mission, I saw the Bangkok Post publish at the time, a much talked about article, building on data presented by the Swiss bank Credit Suisse on how Thailand had become the most unequal country in the world. At the time, the headline was that 1% of the richest Thais controlled close to 67% of the country's wealth, the highest percentage compared to any other country in the world. And even if at the time several voices criticized and opposed this analysis, inequality has undoubtedly become a major, major issue here in Thailand. Democracy also came in strong immediately upon my arrival as I'm landing in Suvarnabhumi Airport, coincided with the national elections of April 2019. These elections, the first after the 2014 coup, have allowed Thailand to resume the practice of democracy as expressed by the freedom to vote and the re-establishment of an elected parliament. Your invitation for UNDP to address these two issues and discuss their relationship is therefore an opportunity for my organization, but also for me at a more personal level, to not only reflect on how they are interrelated, but also to think of the type of policies and interventions that would be required in Thailand to reduce inequalities and strengthen democracy. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, raising these questions and placing them at the heart of UNDP's work, I believe is further justified, as we have here a very strong convergence of a national vision formulated by Thailand for its own development, and a commitment and endorsement by Thailand of an international development framework. Allow me to clarify. On one hand, 
Thailand's 20-year development strategy with a vision of achieving stability, prosperity, and sustainability has adopted the reduction of inequalities as one of its six strategies, more precisely under strategy number four, entitled Broadening Opportunity and Equality in Society. And if democracy is not explicitly mentioned in this strategy, the principles of people empowerment and improved government are very much highlighted as means and objectives of this 20-year vision. On the other hand, and at the global level, Agenda 2030 and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals, endorsed by all United Nations member states, including Thailand in 2015, clearly acknowledge both inequalities as a major challenge and democracy as a clear objective. Paragraphs 3 and 4 of the introduction of the official declaration for Agenda 2030 states, and I quote, we resolve between now and 2030 to end poverty and hunger everywhere, to combat inequalities within and among countries, to build peaceful, just, and inclusive societies, to protect human rights and promote gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls, and to ensure the lasting protection of the planet and its natural resources. We resolve also to create conditions for sustainable, inclusive, and sustained economic growth, shared prosperity, and decent work for all, taking into account different levels of national development and capacities. As we embark on this great collective journey, we pledge that no one will be left behind. Recognizing that the dignity of the human person is fundamental, we wish to see the goals and targets met for all nations and peoples and for all segments of society and we will endeavor to reach the furthest behind first." End quote. I think that the characters that we have seen in the video earlier during this opening would not say anything different than those words. Furthermore, as we know, the Agenda 2030 is accompanied by 17 sustainable development goals, of which goal 10, you've just mentioned it, is dedicated to reducing inequality within and among countries. And goal 16 focuses on peace, justice, and accountable and inclusive institutions. As we can see, these two frameworks, the National 20-Year Development Strategy of Thailand and the 2030 Agenda, reinforce each other, highlighting, in my view, the consensus of many on the importance and validity of the issues we are discussing today, inequalities and democracy. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, inequality, maybe at par with climate change, is in my view one of the biggest threats facing humanity today. We will not achieve the sustainable development goals if we do not urgently address this issue. The objective of leaving no one behind is nothing else but another reminder of the centrality of this. The world has made significant progress on the front of poverty reduction and human development in the recent decades. Extreme income poverty has been reduced from 36% of global population in 1990 to about 8% today. More than a billion people have been lifted out of extreme income poverty. This was possible because of higher growth in developing countries and the rapid technological progress and innovation. In Thailand, we have seen great progress that the country has made in the recent past. Extreme poverty is almost zero, and multidimensional poverty is also negligible due to better provision of infrastructure and services, including health and education. The country has moved to universal health coverage, consolidating several social protection schemes. Thailand has developed into a rapidly modernizing and urban economy. The rapid expansion in manufacturing and services underpinned its transformation into what is today an upper-middle-income country. 
We are living in the age of the fourth industrial revolution, and the world has never been as interconnected as it is today. Yet, despite these impressive results in Thailand and globally, inequalities not only persist, but are growing, intersecting and reinforcing each other and perpetuating intergenerational poverty and exclusion. Income inequality has increased in nearly all regions of the world in recent decades, but at different scales and speeds. The global top 1% earners have captured twice as much of the income growth as the 50% poorest individuals in the last few decades. Inequality is not only to be seen from an income perspective. Inequalities affect many other dimensions that are key to fostering development. Inequalities to accessing natural resources, such as land and water, limit the potential of farmers and of their harvests. Inequalities to benefiting from services such as health and education refrain many from acquiring the skills required to perform highly paid and sought after jobs and careers. Inequalities in terms of digital literacy creates further inequalities given the increasingly important role that computers and other technologies play in our daily lives and in the workspace. Furthermore, these inequalities are further strengthened by many other factors, such as geography, topography, cultural traditions, social norms, societal fabrics, and political systems. A recent article in the Bangkok Post presented a very well-informed illustration of these different types of inequalities in Thailand. On the issue of income inequality, it stated that in 2015, the average income of the poorest 10% people was more than 20 times lower than the richest 10%. Inequality in terms of assets is also a strong reality in Thailand. The same article underlined how in 2012, the top 10% of the country's landowners owned 60 plus percent of all available land. Their combined land holding were 853 times higher than the bottom 10%. In terms of access to education, inequality is also a reality, especially at tertiary level. University enrollment rates for the top 10% were on average 17 and a half times higher than for the bottom 10% in Thai society. Fundamentally, inequality represents a huge obstacle to our sustainable future. It impedes human development and hampers people from reaching their full potential, hindering the fulfillment of their human rights. And this is where the relationship between inequality and democracy, in my view, appears. A democratic state that is unable to address the issues of inequality and sees a growing share of its population fall behind, deprived of opportunities, could be more likely to see expression of social contestation and dissatisfaction. Unequal participation in politics and state and society, as well as unequal access to public services, affect the quality and sustainability of democracy. The concentration of income and wealth in a few rich hands and the reverting of economic power into political power can weaken the legitimacy of institutions, reduce trust and social consensus, and deteriorate the democratic values and principles. High levels of inequality can increase political and social tensions drive instability and conflicts. If unaddressed, and even worse, ignored, the existing inequalities would challenge peace and security and endanger the sustainable future that we seek for ourselves and our children. Examples of this can be found in many places. 
in the news for the last week, we have all seen the whole population of Lebanon go down in the streets to protest against the government and the political parties with rising inequalities and a perceived incapacity to address these, the trust of the people in their political leaders, irrespective of their party affiliation, has disappeared, weakening democracy and challenging peace in this complex country. In Chile, demonstrations against rising inequalities have led the country two days ago to cancel international events it was supposed to host in the coming weeks, including the APEC summit and the Conference of Parties on Climate Change. More dramatically, it has also resulted to this day in 20 deaths. In my own country, France, we have seen over the last several months a general contestation and social movement symbolized by the yellow vests. Individuals from all sectors and social political affiliations are expressing their frustration to the perceived lack of strong action by the government to address raising inequalities and increasing cost of living. And recent polls and studies in France have shown a significant weakening of the value of democracy among the population, clearly linked to this Yellow Vest movement. Based on these observations and situations affecting many countries, there is a large amount of academic research that has been dedicated to this issue of interlinkages between inequality and democracy. And if we do not see, for now, strong conclusions and consensus emerging, there are indications that inequality does increase both the demand for populist or authoritarian leaders and their supply. They raise the public openness to non-mainstream political movements. Social and economic uncertainty that develops with rising inequalities can create a sense of lack of personal control and therefore an inclination towards leaders that appear as taking more radical action with the hope of reducing the uncertainty. Yet no clear and absolute correlation seems to appear. What is the situation in Thailand? It seems to me that the importance and reality of inequalities is acknowledged by all, including by the government. Efforts are being made to address them, and several key policies and interventions have been passed and are being successfully, I believe, implemented. The universal health coverage is such an example of a best practice that undoubtedly contributes to reducing inequalities. It covers and benefits an estimated population of more than 48 million people and even includes non-Thai citizens. Several studies have shown how the scheme has prevented many, and especially the poorest of the population, to avoid debt related to expenses for medical care, thus reducing inequalities in the access to health care. This policy of Thailand was acknowledged and praised most recently by the global community at a high-level event that took place during the UN General Assembly in September this year. The government's recent efforts to address the issue of statelessness and the delivery of citizenship to more than 100,000 people in the last three years is another example of intervention that addresses inequalities as without identity papers, these, individu these individuals were not entitled to the same benefits and services as others. Other policies and tools established by the government to reduce inequalities include a series of cash grant mechanisms for the elderly, benefiting 8.4 million people last year, for people with disability, covering 1.6 million people, and I'm told that the president of the KPI Institute was very much behind those decisions at the time. There is also the child support grant and the well-established welfare card that has been distributed to more than 14.6 million people here in Thailand. All these measures are clear attempts by the government at reducing inequalities in Thailand. 
In UNDP, we are also implementing with our national partners from government and civil society specific interventions focusing on the most vulnerable populations, such as people with disabilities, members of the LGBTI community, the elderly, ethnic community members, which all contribute to addressing inequalities. More broadly, our efforts in this area are integral to our work to assist Thailand achieve the SDGs. Because the imperative of reducing inequalities is enshrined in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its central pledge of leaving no one behind. To help countries achieve SDG 10 focused on reducing inequality, four strands of policy recommendations or targets have been identified. First, to progressively achieve and sustain income growth of the bottom 40% of population at a rate higher than the national average. Second, to ensure equal opportunities as well as reduce inequalities in outcomes through eliminating discriminatory laws, policies and practices and promote appropriate policies and legislation. Third, to adopt fiscal, wage and social protection policies to progressive achieve equality. And fourth, to empower people and promote social, economic and political inclusion of all. Empower people and inclusion of all. Two key words that appear in the fourth target of goal 10, highlighting how a stronger engagement of people can positively impact inequalities, and thereby, in my view, revealing another dimension of the relation between inequality and democracy. Empowerment of individuals and their inclusion and participation in decisions, processes and activities affecting their social and economic well-being are explicitly presented as a means to positively addressing inequalities. But empowerment and inclusion have not only social and economic dimensions, they also have a political dimension. Empowering all people and ensuring their participation into politics and political systems means widening and deepening democracy. This requires formulation of various laws and development of democratic institutions, as well as to abolish discriminatory laws and practices. Translated in political terms, one can argue that democracy would therefore be the most appropriate system of government to institutionalize and sustain efforts to reducing inequalities, as it is both based on the concepts of people participation and civic empowerment and reinforces them. In Thailand, the April 2019 elections of the new parliament has strengthened democracy and allows the expression of people's aspiration through their representation in legislative debates. The fulfillment of their rights, a better and more equal distribution of wealth, but also of access to services and resources would undoubtedly be included in these aspirations. The more transparent, inclusive, accountable the institutions, not only of parliament, but of governance are, the more likely and sustainably inequalities can be addressed and reduced. The role of parliament in deciding how the government spends taxpayers' money through the voting of the budget and in holding the executive branch accountable is also critical in the efforts for a more inclusive society. These issues are those contained in goal 16 of the SDGs, a goal that aims to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is on this last point that I would like to make an additional argument which I believe is very relevant for Thailand in its efforts to both reduce inequalities and strengthen its democracy. 
institutions at all levels. Many would agree that Thailand, despite several legislation to create and institutionalize local governments, remains a centralized state. A decentralization act was passed in 1999, setting out a process to decentralize some budget to local administrative organizations. It aimed at the time that 35% of total government budgets would be transferred to sub-district administrations. 20 years later, less than 30% is transferred to local administration organizations, and not much more has happened. It seems decisions are taken in Bangkok, solutions are to be found in Bangkok. This has been repeated to me many times when I question local government authorities and executives in the provinces, and when I ask them how do they solve problems, they always respond the same way, they go to Bangkok. But many would also argue that both inequalities and democracy are best addressed at local level, thus calling for a more decentralized political and administrative system. Inequalities differ from one location to another. Determinants of inequality are geographically specific as they relate to the type of economic opportunities available in a specific location, to the geographic and topographic isolation of the area, to the climate and natural resources available in the area. Solutions to address these inequalities and their root causes need to be informed by local realities and best defined and implemented by authorities that are cognizant of these. Similarly, democracy as a system that values citizen participation and inclusion is more direct and some argue efficient if performed applying the principle of subsidiarity, meaning keeping the distance between the decision and the implementation of the decision shortest. Ensuring local governments are elected by citizens, are empowered to implement policies, raise revenues and allocate resources, all based on an understanding and acknowledgement of the social economic realities, as well as the aspirations and interests of the local community are not only elements of local democracy, but also tools to addressing more efficiently inequalities. Decentralization reinforcing a democratic system therefore appears as a potentially powerful approach to in addressing inequalities through empowerment. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned earlier, all these considerations that I'm sharing with you are not based on conclusive academic research but based on observation and experience. And there are as many counterexamples as there are success stories. More than 20 years of development practice have taught me that pragmatism and a strong understanding of local cultural and historical contexts are very important when looking for development solutions to challenges that are increasingly complex, unpredictable, and volatile. I am nevertheless convinced that Agenda 2030 and the 17 SDGs offer an amazing and unique opportunity and a framework to addressing many of these challenges, including reducing inequalities and strengthening democracy. Because they are based on human rights that are universal and included in a one single framework highlighting the interdependence of all the goals, the SDGs are a powerful tool for countries to adopt and strive to achieve at national level, but also at local level. In Thailand, I am further convinced of their relevance because they align very nicely to another strong and holistic, but this time homegrown reference framework, the sufficiency economy philosophy. As a newcomer to Thailand, I was provided several opportunities to discuss and learn about the sufficiency economy philosophy. What struck me immediately 
was how much the SDGs and Agenda 2030 share common values and principles with the framework established by the late King Bumibol. The sufficiency economy philosophy advocates for growth, but with stability rather than rapidity. It emphasizes sustainable development, sound macroeconomic policies, and equitable sharing of the benefits of growth. At the same time, it highlights the dangers of, excessing, of excessive risk-taking, of untenable inequalities, and among others, of wasteful use of natural resources. The sufficiency economy approach stresses the importance of self-immunity. In other words, the ability to strengthen at all levels the resilience of the country, of the community, of the family to external shocks. These could be an economic crisis, a natural disaster, a year of bad harvest. The three key principles of sufficiency economy philosophy, moderation, wisdom, and insight, are very much required for the achievements of the SDGs. In 2007, UNDP Thailand produced a national human development report entitled Sufficiency Economy and Human Development. In its introduction, the report recalled how the concept of human development puts people and their well-being at the center of development and provides an alternative to the traditional, more narrowly focused economic growth paradigm. Human development is about people and about expanding their choices and capabilities to live long, healthy, knowledgeable, and creative lives. The report also underlined how the thinking on the sufficiency economy clearly belonged to the realm of human development as it focuses on humanity, making sustainability key, favoring well-being over wealth, and insisting on the importance of learning. On 26 May 2006, the then UN Secretary General Kofi Annan presented a Human Development Lifetime Achievement Award to King Bumibol. I'd like to repeat here today what Kofi Annan said at the time, as I believe it remains not only valid, but very relevant to the issue we are discussing. He said, and I quote, His Majesty's sufficiency economy philosophy is of great relevance to communities everywhere during these times of rapid globalization. The philosophy's middle way approach strongly reinforces the United Nations' own advocacy of a people-centered and sustainable path towards human development. His Majesty's development agenda and visionary thinking are an inspiration to his subjects and to people everywhere." End of quote. We clearly have, with the sufficiency economy philosophy, a very strong reference framework to address inequalities. But here also, just as in the 20-year development vision of Thailand, we do not find an explicit reference to democracy. We can identify key components of it in the discourse on the sufficiency economy philosophy. The focus placed on learning, on inclusion in decision-making, on bottom-up processes, and on empowerment of individuals within the doctrine of SEP are clear links to some of the fundamental principles of democracy. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, where does this leave us? We all know Thailand is confronted both with strong inequalities of various nature and repeated challenges to its democracy over the past decades. We all believe that the Thai people, if not all, at least the majority, aspire to a more equal society and a more deeply rooted and resilient democracy. Despite this month being only my sixth in the country, based on my observations and conversations with representatives of all sectors of the Thai society, I am confident that the country will achieve the goals of reducing inequality and strengthening democracy. The vision of the government is clear. The country's commitment to the SDGs is strong. The focus of the sufficiency economy philosophy on reducing inequalities and empowering people is unquestionable. 
nor is the adoption of the doctrine by all development stakeholders of Thailand. Key government policies to address inequalities are in place and can be further strengthened. Decentralization? Local elections have been discussed regularly, and if no specific dates have yet been announced, it would appear they are likely to take place in the near future. On the UNDP side, I can comfortably reiterate in front of all of you our strong dedication to promoting sustainable human development in Thailand, which places both the objective of fostering equal societies and societies where individuals are provided with freedom of choice at its core. We support Thailand's effort in strengthening governance systems to better respond to the needs of the poorest and the most marginalized groups and help foster civic engagement so that the voices of the disadvantaged and marginalized groups are heard. UNDP is working on various documents and tools to that effect. For example, last December, we released a comprehensive disability guidance note to ensure the needs and rights of people with disabilities are incorporated in all development work. Last July, in collaboration with the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative, we launched a handbook on National Multidimensional Poverty Index to help identify those population groups that are facing severe and overlapping deprivations. The Multidimensional Poverty Index is also an instrument for enhancing governance, help in policy coordination, improve national information systems, and foster the accountability of governments. The UN Operational Guide on Leaving No One Behind, which was published this year and in which UNDP played a big role, provides a concrete framework that countries can use to make inequalities visible and actionable across the SDGs. I do also want to use this platform to announce that our next flagship Global Human Development Report will focus on inequality and will be launched early December this year. And in parallel, here in Thailand, we are working with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Thailand Development Research Institute on a national human development report that will focus on sufficiency economy philosophy, empowerment and inclusion of people and communities to achieve the SDGs, which will address at its core the issue of inequalities. It therefore seems to me that all the requirements are met to provide a conducive environment for inequalities to be further addressed and democracy to be further deepened. So we are left with inconclusive academic research that will link in a positive relationship democracy with inequality. Well, to this, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, all I can say is that, is that I am not an academic. I am a development practitioner working for an organization that has, as an opening of its charter, a reference to we, the peoples. Therefore, guided by the aspirations, the wishes, the dreams of the people I serve. And I firmly believe that the people in Thailand and all around the world, for that matter, would much prefer to live in countries and within societies where inequalities are addressed and reduced and where their voice is heard and counts in the decisions taken on their behalf. I thank you for your attention. I thank the King Prajadipok Institute for their kind invitation. And I ask you all to champion the SDGs and contribute in your respective capacities to the country's vision so that we can transform the values and principles contained in the sufficiency economy philosophy in the Agenda 2030 and in the concept of sustainable human development, translate these into a better future for the people of Thailand and ensuring that none of them is left behind. Thank you very much.
ขอบพระคุณมิสเตอร์เรโนเมยนะคะผู้แทนโครงการพัฒนาแห่งสหประชาชาติประจำประเทศไทยหรือ UNDP ที่ได้มาแสดงปาฐกถานำในเวทีประชุมวิชาการสถาบันพระปกเกล้าในครั้งนี้นะคะครับและเพื่อเป็นการขอบคุณนะครับท่านวิทยากรนะครับก็ผมขอกราบเรียนเชิญดรชิงชัยหันเจนลักษ์ประธานคณะกรรมการจัดการประชุมวิชาการสถาบันพระปกเกล้าครั้งที่21นะครับได้เป็นเป็นเกียรตินะครับมอบเกียรติบัตรให้แก่มิสเตอร์เรโนเมเจผู้แทนโครงการพัฒนาแห่งสหประชาชาติประจำประเทศไทยหรือ UNDP ในโอกาสนี้ด้วยครับค่ะ Ladies and gentlemen to deliver an appreciation to our keynote speaker may I invite Dr. Ching Chai Han Jae Lak the representative of King Prachatipok Institute offer certificate to Mr. r e n o Mayer please อาจารย์ตรงกลางก็ได้ครับตรงกลางกลางหน่อยขอบพระคุณท่านอาจารย์ชิงชัยเป็นอย่างสูงครับสถาบันพระปก